Good night. Good night. There you go. There you go. Uh, so the other um, the other mug you'll see is uh, Dan Fraser. Good day, mate. Good day, Pete. So uh, how can I help you now, Jeremy? Jeremy. Well, I, I thought. Um, so what we'll do is we'll. we'll uh, I think you said you had some uh, stuff you wanted to show us first. And then well, we'll yes, just... we can do that. I'll walk you down the hall of shame. The hall this of shame. This is a new house for me. <laughs> and I finally got the okay from Debbie to put up some art. So oh. as you go up my steps, well, come down my steps, you see um, original Cy Berry, the very first pen he had ever tried. And he gave oh, it to Ed Rhodes and I. And we loved it so much. He would hold it for... Um, Two months and I would get it back. And when I so I heard about that, he made this one for me and gave one to Ed. Oh yeah. <laughs> Over here is um piece of art done for me by Doug Cloud of Moonstone fame. Yeah. Uh, Doug did a lot of covers for Moonstone. He's a great artist out of Illinois. Um, this picture up here is a cover by Rolf Ghost that I liked. I like the island and the treasure chest. On this side, we have a little reflection. Mm. Um, a cover after Don Newton, do, done by uh, classic artist Kathy Popper, that I really liked. Uh, her husband's a close friend of mine and a basketball mate. She did a great job. Yeah, that looks amazing. Moving on. Everybody likes Coke, including the Phantom. <laughs> this is um, a Cyberry, and it's a real thing. You hear my little mini barking in the back. You hear your voices. This is an interesting piece here. Oh, wow. Um, Dietmar knew the guy that did the photographs for the movie. And this was one of the photographs they were going to use and I liked it so much, I commissioned an artist to paint it. Oh, so, so that's actually, that's not the original by Drew Strazan. Yeah, this was a photograph, and this is actually the painting, right? Right. Okay, so I thought that was kind of neat. Mm. Well, that's okay. awesome. Um, this is a Felmang piece, if you can see it okay. Uh, that I like because he's trying to control Hero with... Uh, devil in the background there like that piece uh yeah i did a big favor for cyber and his family and he did this for me uh it's hard to see but you can see skull mark in the end of the chair so he's not on yeah. his throne he's in his um dining room <laughs> yeah that's but amazing I really like that. nice. that's a nice oil painting that i did for me well wow. okay this one is an unusual one, too. This was done by filming in Italy. And the interesting thing about it, I was um, hunting for comic books, and I found one that was done back in the 1950s. And it was a cowboy comic called uh, Smokey. And Smokey had a wolf, a pet wolf. I forgot the name of the wolf. But there was a cover where... Um, uh, silver tip, he had a little silver lock of hair, that's how he got his name, crossing a gorge on a rope with his wolf on his back. And of course, there were cowboys over here. Uh, they're like silhouettes yeah. of natives on mine, but there are cowboys trying to shoot them. But I like the concept, and Filming did that for me. Oh, nice. So it was that's taken after a cover. And later on, I found it was also a cover from the king of the royal mounted so I don't know who stole what but um, the artists used to do that a lot of times according to Siberi here's my favorite one of my favorite pieces in my whole collection I got a lot of um, uh, this was done by an artist named Roy Datu in um, uh, the Philippines and I have several of his that I'll show you but I really like his work he does a lot of kings and queens portraits. Portraits. Okay. Here's one by Italian artist, uh, Caria. 
he did a lot of the Italian comics back in the, the 60s and 70s. And, of course, the red costume. I have a couple by him. Mm, it's this amazing, that artist. And um, this was interesting for several reasons. When I went to high school, our uh, team logo was a clipper ship. And when I saw this, yeah. I said, there's a phantom. He must have went to my high school. There's a clipper ship. <laughs> so, so that's um, by Roy Datu as well. And I really like that because of the ship. Hmm. Let's move on here. Uh, here's an original, original Sunday by Cy Berry. I can show it to you. Yeah. I'm getting glare off the lights as you see. But <laughs> wow. Sundays in those days were much bigger than what you get now. I estimate this yeah. to be uh, maybe um, two and a half feet wide, maybe two feet high. <clears throat> Next to this is a real neat piece out of. Um, uh, well, that's a Moonstone uh, Generations, isn't it? Yeah, it's sort of Generations, but the art was actually from Sweden. I forgot oh, okay. the uh, Charles Settle, I think. Beautifully done. Yeah, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah. Um, this one was done. As, I had the piece for a long time, so I can show you. It was done by an artist named Tom Lau. Tom Lau did um, Batman and Robin and Airboy and a lot of the other things. And he was one of the first artists I met when I started collecting. And I told him how much I liked the Phantom and he did this piece for me. Uh -huh. I got a real interesting piece here. Um, this was done by a great American artist who passed away. Excuse me that passed away recently. And it's the origin of the Phantom done by a guy named Gray Morrow. Gray Morrow uh, drew the Phantom very lifelike, not over muscular, but well built. He was very famous mm -hmm. for his Tarzan strip and Tarzan mm -hmm. comics and Flash Gordon. And he really did a beautiful job. Mm -hmm. You can see that. Yeah, okay. that, that second panel looks a lot like uh, Tarzan. Yes, yeah, you can see, you're right, exactly right. Looks oh, like okay. Johnny Weiss, a young Johnny Weissmeller. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, over here is a piece that was originally done by Cy Berry. Um, and I would oh. not sell it. So I commissioned Roy Datu in the Philippines to do it. And it was taken oh. from the Phantom movie. In fact, it's one of the gum cards in the set. Do you remember it, Jermaine? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you... there's also a cover uh, for Sweden or Norway. You're right. That yeah. It was well. a cover as well. Hmm. So I think Cy gave his to his son, I believe. Now, this is a real expensive piece here that I have up. This was done. It was a cover to a trade paperback. What I liked so much was the way that uh, Doug Clava did Devil. A very mm. dark piece, so looks much better in person than. Yeah. Okay. I've actually just that, been... Oh, I have one more giant piece to show you. This is the cover to one of the Harmony Press mm. uh, by Sean Joyce. Huh. I was, I was literally just looking at that book. <laughs> there you go, mate. <laughs> but uh, beautifully done. It's a large piece. And that's what I... Oh, now I have something over here. Forgot. I was in Sweden a number of years ago, and um, Bjorn Harnby was a friend of mine, and he bought a piece of Phantom Art over there from a gallery it was done in black and white and gray tones. Well, John Bedoni was, my friend John Bedoni that I was yep. over there with, was taken back. He really loved this idea. So I asked Cy, commissioned Cy to do a big one for me and John. This was mine. And two years later, he did some accent pieces for me. Can you see that, Jermaine? Yep. Okay, because I'm kind of behind it now. He did that one. 
and he did just what looks like Tarzan making his call. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Oh. That's currently what I have up on the wall, but I want to show you some pieces I pulled out. This was a piece done by DC artist Luke McDonald. Oh. And it's kind of hard to nice. see the Phantom fighting pirates, so I had them do it in color. <laughs> You can see yeah. it a little bit better. Yeah. Oh, I'll right. bring, I'll matted them together. Black and white. And then color. Okay, that was a large piece. This next piece is very interesting. Back in 1942, the serial came out in the movie theaters. And there was a press guide that came out along with the um, serial. And inside that press guide, they had a black and white piece of art to promote the movie in the newspaper. And here it is. It's original. Is that the original? Oh, and wow. What, what's interesting about it is that it says The Phantom by Leon Falk which is the first time I ever saw that. Yeah. Wow. So is that the original of that? Yes. Oh, wow. So I guess there may be more. I don't know. Let me uh, move wow. on here. This is a more recent one. This is an all done by Roy Datu. Um, and what's interesting about it, it was originally done by Don Newton in black and white. And um, I was talking to a couple of friends in Australia, and they liked it, but they didn't love it because he's not really on the true skull throne, in their opinion. Mm. They liked the big rock, mm. you know. But I thought it was interesting mm. because it reminded me of a um, native uh, shield in the back that you would see. Yeah. And I kind of like that. Mm. That's the newest one I have. Um, yeah. You'll like this one. This is a cover mm. from a book by Fellman. And the story is the <laughs> one that I appeared in where I was a U-boat captain and the Phantom beats the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the story... He and Diana were on the R&R, &R and um, they were scuba diving. They see a, uh, a um, sub doing something down in the water, and he goes to investigate, and they shoot a spear gun. He just eludes it, and then he c comes back another time and infiltrates, and I, as a U-boat captain, grab him by the back, and I said, I got him, fellas, and he turns around, elbows me, and puts a... Uh, Skull marks are all over my face. <laughs> See that? Kind of a, do, you remember, do you remember the name of that story, Pete? Um, let me think. I'll think of it. I should know that. I should have had yeah, that yeah. on hand. That was about um, four years ago, four or five. Okay. okay. I got two more here that I pulled out. And I have plenty more art if that's what you want to do, but I'll... Yeah, well, what... Because it was from the serial. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. It was a pen and ink uh, rendered by some unknown artist when Tom Tyler uh, did the serial. Yeah. Hey, do you remember seeing that? Yeah, I remember watching or it. a version of it. And yeah. they would reprint yeah. this and put it in the marquee when the, uh, people came in to see the movie. So that did, was that one that they used for an advertising yes, poster? Yes, exactly. Yes. Yeah, okay. Now I don't know if you'll yeah. recognize yeah, okay. this bloke. <laughs> <laughs> I once showed I taught school for 38 years in the inner city in Baltimore and... Uh, Took this picture in, and the kid said, uh, Mr. Klaus, what happened to you? Where did you get all those muscles? What happened? I said, I used to work out. You know? <laughs> I have a couple little interesting things here I, I pulled out that were handy. 
most of my good stuff is in the warehouse because I moved in this house and I'll show you my room in the back that I'm getting organized. But um, when the Phantom movie came out, we were lucky enough to meet the guy who designed the costume and the ring. And he sent me a waxing of the ring and I had the Phantom ring, where we at? Made in gold. Those are solid gold. And I got big hands, 15 and a half, and it actually fits. <laughs> yeah. That's wow. um that's the one thing that my wife remembers about you, Pete, is the size of your hands. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to hear with this. Yeah. And there's the good mark where we at. There we are. Wow. It has a good mark in gold and the skull mark. And those and those are cast from the yeah. from the wax from the of the that original the made, that made the ring. I, the I almost had Billy Zane's um, costume, and I'll tell you the well. story on that. The guy that made it, it uh, his name eludes me right now. It's been a number of years. He had seven costumes that Billy Zane had on hand if he needed them, or the stunt doubles needed them. And he had one left. And prior to me getting in touch with him, he sent it back to Paramount. But he told me he would have traded me that costume for um, a replica of the Black Beauty of the Green Hornet, which was about $500 at the time, which would have been a deal. But I did mm. get the Phantom's head <clears throat> and the cow and the mask from the movie. That's in storage, mm. so I can't even show mm. that to you. <clears throat> what else do we have here? So you saw the ring. Here is a neat prototype. And I'm going to try to read it <laughs> to you. It says, Mr. Mr. Walker's Mr. dark sunglasses, identity concealing. And at the bottom here, it says, you should wear this with a trench coat and a fedora to complete um, identity concealment. And it says, warning, um, looking at the glasses, the evildoers will see a skull. <laughs> so what happened? And, and that's signed on the back by Cy Barry, I think. Yeah, well, Cy Barry signed it for me because the company didn't want to do it, but they made it for me for the 2002 meeting in ah. New York. So I had Cy sign it and uh, Luke McDonald. Both were there. Yeah. I just thought it was nice, neat to have signed because it was such an unusual wow. piece. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Phantom pen knife. The artwork is from Sweden. So whoever made it either made it over there or here. This is the opposite sign. But I thought it was kind of neat. Do you recognize the artwork, Jermaine? Did you ever um, see that? Uh, maybe Hans Lindell. Maybe, yeah, I'm not at the top of my head, no. Okay, let's continue on. I, I would have said Rolf goes, but... This is just, I uh, hadn't seen this one before. The Phantom Keychain. And on this side, of course, it's a phantom. I don't know who did that artwork. On this side, the skull. And when I found this piece, I found this as well. It's a little hand game. It's hard to see. It's got a little tiny metal BB. Huh. And it's a maze. Yep. And it's called um, the Phantom's uh, Skull Puzzle. Yeah. And it's the just, idea it's one of those ones where you've got to get the ball into the, the middle. Ball in and out of the maze to get it into the center of the skull. And I've never seen yeah. another one. But it looks oh, like yeah. a kid's toy. But this looks the same. Yeah, it does. Yes. So I'm yeah. thinking the same people made it. And this one, <clears throat> I'm not sure where I got this. But it's Cyberry art. It's got the letter P for Phantom. And on the back, through the hole, 
You see his good mark. Huh. It's all in shape of a skull That's and cool. crossbones. I thought that was kind of an interesting little keychain. Very well made. Sure. And I got one more item in here. I have one other piece of art, too, I forgot. Hey, like this. Looks like basically an Indian arrowhead that you would wear over your neck and on the back. Uh. Skull mark. But what's interesting, you know how the Phantom keeps his knife in his boot? Yep. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. So he's always got a way out. He, he wow, must wear this cool. at Walker's table. It's Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, by the way, uh, what did you guys think of the new trade paperback from True? Yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. Oh, it was very, very yeah, good. Really loved it. Let me show you a piece by. Um, just noticed I had it over here. By Terry Leppin, and that he made for me for a Christmas card. Oh, it's... Mm. did a beautiful, beautiful job. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Is that oil or paint or? What was that? Um, what's the medium used for that? Um, I think um, he used photography and acrylic somehow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, looks really nice. Beautifully long. done. Hmm. The trees look lifelike and he inserted a phantom in there beautifully. Mm. So I thought that was kind of neat. Now, I'll go in any direction if you want to hear about Lee Falk or if you want to see my back where I'm working on, your choice. Yeah, okay. Well, what we'll do um, is we'll go through... Um, we can probably just do audio now, so if it's easier, you could um, just put the okay. phone up in your ear or something. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just... Um, uh, we'll introduce the podcast... Uh, and then we'll introduce you, and then we've just got a whole bunch of questions, and we'll just kind of okay. go from mm. there. Is that okay? Okay. Now, do you have any time restraints or anything, Pete? Any what? Time restraints. I'm having a hard time. Okay. Uh, do you have any, like, uh, time restraints? Like, do you have to be somewhere in a certain time or anything like oh, that? No, 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 no. I'm okay. good. This is your time. Okay, sweet. Well, we'll we really appreciate it's it. It's so, awfully hard to hear on this little thing. Yeah. Did you want to maybe just put it up to your phone, so up to your ear, so it's like a like a phone call? Because we don't have to do this. We don't have to do the uh, the the visual. Uh, because we've already like had a bit of a look, and we can just we can have let me tell you now. one thing before you cut okay. off. Okay. Yep. Yep. This is where I'm working at right now. All these are Phantom comics oh. <laughs> from all over the world. And there's some other ones, of course, like uh, things I remembered as a kid. But you can look at some of my art. Just, um, wow. Here's a George Wilson that he made for me. Oh, amazing. We use it in the, um, in the uh, newsletter that wrote... Let me see what I have here. I've been, here's a nice sexy one that Cy Berry did for me. <laughs> he could do it when he wanted to, yeah, couldn't he? Sure he could. <laughs> and this is a beautiful one by Hans Landel. It was a cover. He's very is, good with yeah. lights and darks. Is that an original? Um, yeah, that's an original. Oh, wow. He sent There's that to me. Those. Here's one from your neck of the woods. Ah, uh, yes. Do you Antonio. know who it is, Jermaine? Yeah. yeah. It's Antonio. Antonio Lemos. For sure. Uh, I could go on and on. This is a <laughs> film thing that he used for comic review. Yep. And uh, uh, I'll show you one big interesting one. It's going to be hard to see. Let's see if I can show you. It's kind of heavy. Okay. Let me position this. Okay, it's uh, Billy Zane done by Charles Stedham. And it has different quadrants. 
<sighs> it's well done. It's, very it's well clearly done. Billy Zane. And everything was from the movie. Mm. Yeah. yeah. A lot of detail. But it's a big one. It's hard to hold. <laughs> and I can just go on and on. I just want to see if there's anything that may be of interest to you. Uh, I think it's all of interest. <laughs> oh, here's a good one. Remember the card set that came out? Yes. Here's a good one. 